All right, here we go. Chapter five, the extra good Sunday. I wonder what they're going to do to try to get out of making this meal, or maybe they won't try to get out of making the meal. No, no. I hope you enjoy the picture in the book too. You're going to like it. All right, chapter five, the extra good Sunday. Sunday morning, Ramona and Beezus were still resolved to be perfect until dinner time. They got up without being called, avoided arguing over who should read Dear Abby's advice first in the paper, complimented their mother on her French toast, and went off through the drizzy rain to Sunday school, neat, combed, and bravely smiling. <clears throat> Later, they cleaned up their rooms without being told. At lunchtime, they ate without complaint. The sandwiches they knew were made up of ground-up tongue. A little added pickle relish did not fool them, but it did help. They dried the dishes and carefully avoided looking in the direction of the refrigerator, lest their mother be reminded they were supposed to cook the evening meal. Mr. and Mrs. Quimby were good-humored. In fact, everyone was so unnaturally pleasant that Ramona almost wished someone would say something cross. By early afternoon, the question was still hanging in the air. Would the girls really have to prepare dinner? Why doesn't somebody say something? Ramona thought, weary of being so good, weary of longing to pick her mother for the raw egg in her lunch. Well, back to the old foot, said Mr. Quimby, as he once more settled himself on the couch with the drawing pad and pencil and pulled off his shoe and sock. The rain finally stopped. Ramona watched for dry spots to appear on the sidewalk and thought of her roller skates in the closet. She looked into Beezus's room and found her sister reading. Ramona knew Beezus wanted to telephone Mary Jane, but had decided to wait until Mary Jane called to ask why she had not come over. Mary Jane did not call, and the day dragged on. When dry spots on the concrete in front of the Quimby's house widened until moisture remained only in the cracks of the sidewalk, Ramona pulled her skates out of the closet to her father, who was holding a drawing of his foot at arm's length to study it. She said, well, I guess I'll go out and skate. Aren't you forgetting something, he asked. What? asked Ramona, knowing very well what. Dinner, he said. The question that had hung in the air all day was answered. The matter was settled. We're stuck, Ramona told Beezus. Now we can stop being so good. The sisters went to the kitchen, shut the door, and opened the refrigerator. A package of chicken thighs, said Beezus with a groan, and a package of frozen peas and yogurt, one carton of plain and one of banana, there must have been a special on yogurt. She closed the refrigerator and reached for the cookbook. I could make place cards, said Ramona, as Beezus frantically flipped pages. We can't eat place cards, said Beezus. Besides, cornbread is your job because you brought it up. Both girls spoke in whispers. There was no need to let their parents, their mean old parents, know what was going on in the kitchen. In her mother's recipe file, Ramona found the card for cornbread written in Mr. Quimby's grandmother's shaky handwriting, which Ramona found difficult to read. I can't find a recipe for chicken thighs, said Beezus. Just hold chicken. All I know is that mother bakes thighs in the flat glass dish with some kind of sauce. Mushroom soup mixed with something and with some kind of little speck stirred in. Ramona remembered that much from watching your mother. Beezus opened the cupboard of canned goods. But there isn't any mushroom soup, she said. What are we going to do? Mix up something wet, suggested Ramona. It would serve him right if it was awful. Yeah, why don't we make something awful, asked Beezus, so then they'll know how we feel when we have to eat tongue. What tastes really awful? Ramona was eager to go along with the suggestion, united with her sister against her enemy for the moment, their parents. Beezus always practical changed her mind. It wouldn't work. We'd have to eat it too. And they're so mean, we'd probably have to do the dishes besides. Anyway, I guess you might say our honor is at stake because they think we can't cook a good meal. Ramona was ready with another solution. Just throw everything in one dish. Beezus opened the package of chicken thighs and stared at them in distaste. I can't stand touching raw meat, she said, as she picked up a thigh between her two forks. Do we have to eat the skin, asked Ramona, all those yucky little bumps. Beezus found a pair of kitchen tongs. She tried to hold down the thigh with a fork and pull off the skin with the tongs. Here, let me hold it, said Ramona, who was not squeamish about touching such things as worms or raw meat. She took a firm hold on the thigh while Beezus grasped the skin with the tongs. Both pulled and the skin peeled away. They played tug of war with each thigh, leaving a sad looking heap of skins on the counter and a layer of chicken thighs in the glass dish. Can't you remember what little specks mother used, asked Beezus? Ramona could not. The girl studied the spice shelf, unscrewed jar lids and sniffed nutmeg. No, cloves, terrible. Cinnamon, uh-uh. Chili powder? Well, 
Yes, that must be it. Ramona remembered that the specks were red. Biza stirred half a teaspoon of the dark red powder into the yogurt, which she poured over the chicken. She slid the dish into the oven at 350 degrees, the temperature for chicken recommended by the cookbook. From the living room came the sound of their parents' conversation, sometimes serious and sometimes highlighted by laughter. While we're slaving out here, thought Ramona as she climbed up on the counter to reach for the box of cornmeal. After she climbed down, she discovered she had to climb back up again for baking powder and baking soda, and finally knelt on the counter to save time and asked Beezus to bring her an egg. It's a good thing mother can't see you up there, remarked Beezus as she handed Ramona an egg. How else am I supposed to reach things? Ramona successfully broke the egg and tossed the shell onto the counter. Now I need buttermilk. Beezus broke the news. There was no buttermilk in the refrigerator. What'll I do, whispered Ramona in panic. Here, use this. Beezus thrust the can carton of banana yogurt at her sister. Yogurt is sort of sour, so it might work. The kitchen door opened a crack. What's going on in there, inquired Mr. Quimby. Beezus hurled herself against the door. You stay out, Shorter. Dinner is going to be a surprise. For a moment, Ramona thought Beezus was going to say a mess. She stirred egg and yogurt together, measured flour, spilling some on the floor, the and then discovered she was short of cornmeal, more panic. My cooking teacher says you should always check to see if you have the ingredients before you start to cook, said Beezus. Oh, shut up, Ramona reached for a package of cream of wheat because its grains were about the size of cornmeal. She scattered only a little on the floor. Something was needed to sop up the sauce with the little red specks when the chicken was served. Rice! They spilled cream of wheat gritted underneath Beezus' feet as she measured rice and boiled water according to the directions of the package. When the rice was cooking, she slipped into the dining room to set the table, and then she remembered they had forgotten a salad. Salad! Oh, carrot sticks were quickest. Beezus began to scrape carrots into the sink. Yipe! yelled Ramona from the counter. The rice! The lid on the pan was chittering, and Beezus snatched a larger pan from the cupboard to transfer the rice. Did you girls need any help? Mrs. Quimby called from the living room. No, answered their daughters. Another calamity. The cornbread should bake at 400 degrees, a higher temperature than that needed for the chicken. What was Ramona to do? Stick it in the oven anyway. Beezus' face was flushed. It went in with... In went the cornbread beside the chicken. Dessert, whispered Beezus. All she could find was a can of boring pear halves. Back to the cookbook, heat with a little butter and serve with jelly in each half, she read. Jelly. Half a jar of apricot jam would have to do. The pears and butter went into the saucepan. Never mind the syrup spilled on the floor. Beezus, Ramona held up the package of peas. Beezus groaned. Out came the partially cooked chicken while she stirred the thawing peas into the yogurt and shoved the dish back into the oven. The rice. They had forgotten about the rice, which was only beginning to stick to the pan. Quick, take it the burner. How did their mother manage to get everything cooked in the right time? Put the carrot sticks on a dish. Pour the milk. Candles, Beezus whispered. Dinner might look better if we have candles. Ramona found two candle holders and two partly metal candles of uneven length. One of them had been used in a Halloween jack-o'-lantern because struck Beezus struck the match to light them because although Ramona was brave enough touching the raw meat, she was skittish about lighting matches. Was the chicken done? The girls anxiously examined their main dish, bubbling and brown around the edges. Beezus stabbed a thigh with a fork, and when it didn't bleed, she decided it must be done. A toothpick pricked the cornbread, came out clean. The cornbread was done, flat but done. Grit, grit, grit sounded under the girl's feet. It was amazing how a tiny bit of spilled cream of wheat could make the entire kitchen floor gritty. At last, their dinner was served. The dining room light turned off. Dinner announced, and the cooks, tense with anxiety that was hidden by candlelight, fell into their chairs. As their parents seated themselves, was this dinner going to be edible? Candles, exclaimed Mrs. Quimby. What a festive meal. Let's taste it before we decide, said Mr. Quimby with his most wicked grin. The girls watched anxiously as their father took his first bite of chicken. He chewed thoughtfully and said with more surprise than necessary, why, this is good. Really is, yes, said Mrs. Quimby, very, and took a bite of the cornbread. Very good, Ramona, she said. Mr. Quimby tasted the cornbread, just like grandmother used to make, he pronounced. The girls exchanged suppressed smiles. They could not taste the banana yogurt, and by candlelight, no one could tell that the cornbread was a little pale. The chicken, Ramona decided, was not as good as her parents thought or pretended to think, but she could eat it without gagging. Everyone relaxed, and Mrs. Quimby said chili powder was more interesting than paprika and asked which recipe they had used for the chicken. Ramona answered, our own, as she exchanged another look with Beezus. Paprika, those little specks in the sauce should have been paprika. We wanted to be creative, said Beezus. Conversation was more comfortable than it had been the previous meal. 
Mr. Quimby said he was finally satisfied with his drawing, which looked like a real foot. Beza said her cooking class was studying the food groups and everyone should eat every day. Ramona said there was this boy at school who called her Egghead. Mr. Quimby explained that Egghead was slang for a very smart person. Ramona began to feel better about yard ape. The meal was a success. If the chicken did not taste as good as the girls had hoped and the cornbread did not raise like their mothers, both were edible. Beesus and Ramona were slightly grateful to their parents for enjoying or pretending to enjoy their cooking. The whole family cheered up. When they had finished their pears and apricot jam, Ramona gave her mother a shy smile. Mrs. Quimby smiled back and patted Ramona's hand. Ramona felt much lighter. Without using words, she had forgiven her mother for the unfortunate egg, and her mother had understood Ramona could be happy again. You cooks have worked so hard, said Mr. Quimby, that I'm going to wash the dishes. I'll even finish clearing the table. I'll help, volunteered Mrs. Quimby. The girls exchanged another secret smile as they excused themselves and skipped off to their rooms before their parents discovered the pile of chicken skins and the broken eggshell on the counter, the carrot scrapings in the sink, the cream of wheat, flour, and pear syrup on the floor.